Monica Rambeau Photon. Issue number four came out. Okay, we're almost over with the series, and it's feeling like it's going to just completely be in this alternate reality. As you know, that's not Chillmonger's brand of story. But what does happen here is we dig into, I guess, alluding to Monica Rambeau's past. And thank you to Be Real with D Real for informing me on the relevance of Moonstone. Yasario, the doctor, and uh, everyone seems to not be with Monica Rambeau. And nevertheless, this truce, this um, alliance, or this discovery of what's really been going on doesn't stand. The art that they used, you can see in the background, is actually, it's, it's comic book art from prior, I guess, covers and whatnot. But they've been using a lot of Monica Rambeau art in there. I think that's a cool way. I think Marvel owns it, so it's not like they have to pay on the same artist who did it the first time. It's not like they got to give them another check. It's all work for hire. So why not utilize things like that? I don't know. That, that probably should be done more often, if you ask me. You can. It's the best. The background art is always busy in this comic. It's never just um, nothing happening. So you see a guy taking a photo with his tablet over there. Well, that guy got it out. And then at the back, you can see her saying, no, no, no. That's nothing. It doesn't kill any, it doesn't even take that much space. It's just, there's something going on in the back. And if you want to be privy to that storytelling, pay attention to it for a little bit. But the world is moving around it, maximizing the pages. I got on issue number one for not, two, for not maximizing the pages because it was just a meteor is falling. And here's another panel of the meteor falling. We had it for like three pages in a row. This is not that. Eventually, we get to fighting, and I love that. What happened was, um, was uh, she was like, "Okay, it's not gonna work that way. Fine, infrared it is." Monica Rambeau has so many different levels of the on the spectrum, which is a better name than Photon, if you ask me. But that's okay. But she's got so many abilities that she flexes them a lot in this five page five issues limited series that's a plus yes the same stretchy kind of powers that doctor that mr fantastic has are used here from the doctor you notice how two superheroes can have the same powers and no one really says anything like deadpool and wolverine it doesn't really matter yeah so for all you kamala khan it's okay ms marvel changed her powers on the tv show no it's not it's it's actually wrong it's never been done before for others. She takes the stone Ahala away from the from the uh, from the headquarters or from the from the laboratory, and she brings it back to her friends that she remembered. Except all of her friends that she remembered don't want anything to do with her. They are gone. They're like, "You're a problem. You are broken." This is this is wrong. Huge big explosion there. What can we say about this artwork? I can tell you that the writer was Eve Ewing. But the artist here was Luca Maresca, and it's only Luca Maresca. So that I now I know who to give credit for. That Ivan Fiorelli guy, whose artwork was cool in the prior, you know, never complained. But if this is still good, then I can properly say I know who to credit for uh, good artwork, which is which is the standout from this man. Colors as well, but the the, the artwork stood out, the line art, very much. There's a moment here where she's talking out loud. Um, I'd have changed that. I'd have had her talking in those text boxes and we could just be reading what she's thinking in her mind. But she does talk and she says in the corner over there, I'm, I'll go back to marrying Jericho Drum. I'll be an Avenger again. I'll pick out my Afro, whatever. I wouldn't have said the words, I'll pick out my Afro. I'd have said the words, I'll pick out my fro without the A. There are moments in here where she says things that sound real. This was not one of those moments that sounded real. I, I just, And this is a, today's episode of Chillmonger Nitpicks. And you can let me know, because there's a comment section, if I'm nitpicking or not. But picking out my fro sounds more natural. It sounds like something that someone who says, don't start none, won't be none, would say, would say also. Comic book returns to Caleb's. Caleb is... Um, her cousin, her cousin. 
And she's, I love the way she changes her clothes again with the artwork. Again with the artwork. You can just see her changing her clothes from one in to another. And there's like lights. How does she do that? Is she making the appearance that she's wearing something different? Or are they trying to say she went really fast, got it out the drawer, put it on? Ta da! Because it could be either way. The lighting in the around her aura doesn't tell me exactly how it happened, but it is something that I enjoyed. I like to see superhero powers in an intimate setting when we're just at home and we're and there's the, a, a can of soda up on the top shelf and Mister Fantastic gets the. That's the way I like it. So when I see things at home, like oh, let me just change my my fit. Hey, do you want this? Hey, do you like that? Always better to me. Because they're super and they don't forget it. They don't act like they're not. They're not hiding it. I guess that's more of a mutant story of hiding your powers and whatnot. But being yourself and and making me imagine as a non-superpowered reader who opens these things for for story and for fantasy. All right, let me show me how you guys get dressed in the Marvel 616. Oh yeah, the Beyonders back, okay? Beyonder's back. She calls him out. Beyonder's like, yeah, okay, here's the thing. Uh, no one likes you. His, he says exactly. It was, uh, oh, they changed her origins. I should have said that. They say that there's two people that they were worried about. One of them was the Molecule Man, Owen Reese. And there's one other person. And then you can see a flashback of her parents talking to her. Mom just got turned down for a job. And it was a very white people would be offended. Not a white, not all white people, of course, because you have to make that distinction. Let me take a different route. It was an authentic conversation that is completely normal to be had in front of your child who is learning the ropes. Nothing at all felt like it was out of place. It just felt super in place. It felt like the writing of somebody who would be doing this comic book, the Colin Kaepernick changed the game. I haven't started it yet, but it sounded like the person who would who would do a story like that would include in here responsibly. I'm trying to compliment it properly rather than shit on who would be offended. Word for word, I'll read it. She goes, it's just not fair, Maria. Those fools don't deserve you. And then she says, why not quit? Monica says, why not quit, mama? If they don't give you the same chance as everybody else, quit and do what? Let my family go without? It's not just about what I want. We don't abide quitters in this house, Monica. We don't give them no one reason to doubt us. The world won't show us any favor, you see. So we put our nose to the grindstone and we, we, your mother's just upset, baby. And she has every right to be because she started a, she started getting kind of scared of the fire coming out of mom, right? Hey. Well, it turns out that when young Monica Rambeau was a little girl, she was able to forge light. I go, okay, mutants? Is that it? I don't know. Let's wait for issue number five to maybe uh, add clarification to it. I would hope she's not a mutant because being a mutant means there's so much wrong with being a mutant. For one, when there was 198 mutants alive after House of M. No more mutants, said the Scarlet Witch. They went on Cerebro. Emma Frost turned it on. She's like, let me count. Only 198. Okay. Then the book came out called The 198 Files. And you can read the book and you can count all of the mutants who were alive during that time. There's got to be a reason. If she's a mutant, if they want to retcon that. There's got to be a reason why Monica Rambeau wasn't seen on the Cerebro Cerebro. That's one problem. But the other problem is when you mix her in with the mutants, she loses the uniqueness or the individuality. I like the solo aspect of the superhero. I don't think Monica Rambeau benefits at all from being a mutant if they go that route. Nothing confirmed. All I'm seeing is she's like, she lights up her things, right? That's all I'm seeing. She lights it up, and then uh, when that origin story happens in Avenger in Amazing Spider-Man Annual, and she becomes 
boom, super powered, that kind of awoken something, which happens with mutants in adolescence. But it just doesn't sit well with me. Changing someone's origins 40 years into their existence never will sit well with me. I'm going to come at it wrong. Undecided about how I feel because it's an unfinished series. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Star Fox is at the end. The guy who does pheromones, the guys who make, who make you fall in love because of the way you smell or however the hell that works. I don't think it really works. I think that's like there is actual science to it where we, we are attracted to scents, human sense, But they really amped it up there in that comic book version. There was a, a mutant. What was her name? Lily Collins. She had like her own little pheromones abilities during the Academy X. A series that Disney Plus should get started on and should have an ongoing. So like 10 episodes and then 10 episodes next year. Definitely should be better better than doing six limited series of six episodes of Moon Knight and then of She-Hulk and then Hawkeye and then Falcon Winter Soldier. And nothing's ever having a continuation. I've been Showmonger. A Photon Friday is in the works. I'm going to message Daryl. That's be real with D real. See what time works best for him. And then we will execute order Monica Rambeau.